Welcome to my podcast, Extraordinary with Neiman. Before we start, I just want to thank you for overwhelming support. That majority came from my hungry kales. My name is Nemanja Golbovic, and you best know me as the CEO and founder of Kale My Name, and my supporters over there are called Hungry Kales. So today I want to start with saying first hello to them in a very traditional way, which is hello, Hungry Kales. Thank you so much for supporting my podcast, but I also hope it reaches the wider audience. Today's episode is going to inspire you so much because there's so much to learn. And I personally am so excited to have this guest, and I know you're going to be excited too. She is known to millions as Way to Health Kitchen, and her name is Jovana Wojkovic. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Jovana. <laughs> Hello. Welcome Hunger to kills. the pod. <laughs> so happy. Thank you. So Thank happy you. to have you here. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm going to start by explaining something. You and I were born at the same country, but we are no longer from the same country <laughs> yeah. when we say that. And a lot of people get confused with that. Our country was called... Yugoslavia, yeah. right? And we were, you were born by Yugoslavia, right? I think that's the year when it fell apart. So uh -huh. technically it was Serbia and Montenegro. It really? Because when so, I was born, it was still called yeah. Yugoslavia. I think 1999 was when it fell apart and I was born that year, so. Oh, okay. So then we got six countries out of uh, one and I'm from Montenegro, but you are from? Serbia. Serbia. Amazing. Um, let's go back to Serbia in 1991 and fun times. <laughs> uh, yeah, you probably don't remember a lot, but what do you remember? What are some of your first memories as a child? Hmm. First memories as a child, a lot of play. Uh -huh. We used to play a lot outside and I'm really sad that the kids nowadays probably won't get to experience that because everything is just about the phones and, you know, the iPads and stuff like that. And, I mean, come on, you couldn't get us inside, like not yeah. even to like have lunch or like, you know, please 30 more minutes. Like it would just scream like all across the, you know, my neighborhood. So I definitely vividly remember that. Um, I also do remember the war from 1999 uh -huh. uh, when Serbia was bombed pretty vividly. I remember the choppers flying, you know, right outside my building and just not knowing whether the bomb is going to be dropped on my building or not. And one day seeing the bomb being dropped on the factory when my mom worked. Uh -huh. And you didn't have cell phones back then. You couldn't just, you know, reach anybody at any time. So just standing at the window and trying to see whether she's going to come out of that bus that she does every day. That's probably one of the traumatic memories I have as a seven-year-old. Mm -hmm. So you do remember, I do remember a little bit of the war, but I don't remember experiencing the fear, which is so weird. I don't know because I blocked out that memory or hmm. was I not understanding as a child that the mm -hmm. bomb can kill me? <laughs> Um, seriously, I might be asking like, oh, it's something going on, but we'll be fine. But I do remember us hiding in the basements. Do you remember that? Oh, uh, we didn't have a basement because we were in a building and uh, I was on the eighth floor, which is kind of the last floor. Uh -huh. So I was closer to the bomb than to the basement. Oh, <laughs> but scary. we were just hiding in whatever should be like the most secure part of the apartment, which is, I guess, kind of the wall in between the rooms where kind of the bathrooms are. We just knew where to hide or we went to countryside for a little bit. But I mean, I'm very lucky that it lasted only three months. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't imagine what happens to people that they just this becomes a new way of living and just a normal mm -hmm. life for them for years. So, you know, it's definitely not something I would wish any kid to go through. Yeah, I so agree. I remember those sirens um, warning mm -hmm. us that the danger it's coming. Mm -hmm. Do you remember those? I remember them. And for the longest time, I didn't realize why I have such a jumpy personality. Like mm -hmm. you could scare me so easily. Like you would just be like, boom. And, and like, I would just get scared. And actually, Funny story, I'll just be very short. I was in um, one of the spa centers here in Chicago and a lady came behind me to grab water and I just jumped and she turned out to be some kind of doctor that heals some kind of trauma, whatever. And she started questioning me and we went back to the war and she was like, that's why you're jumpy. And I was like, well, thank you for you know telling me this after like 20, 30 years almost at that point, you know, and it's been on my mind ever since. So maybe that's why I'm so jumpy, the sirens. I finally get an answer. Yeah. Good. Tell me about your family, um, who you grew up with. 
So my family was unfortunately very small. Mm -hmm. I always wish my family was bigger because I didn't have any siblings. Uh -huh. I always really wanted to have a brother or a sister, or just someone to fight with, to play with. That was just kind of like the only dream I've had as a child that I just, you know, I, I can't, you can't just, you know, mm -hmm. have it eventually in life. You either have a brother or sister or you don't. Um, so I lived with my mom and with my grandma. This is who I grew up with. My dad wasn't really around. He was like kind of coming and going out of my life as he pleased. And that's probably one of the biggest traumas for my childhood if we can say like that <laughs> why is that uh which part <laughs> why why was he not around do you know anything about it did you ever get a chance to ask him that it's a great question i always thought that i'm really good at communication and that if only i asked them why are you not around me that you know i could get the answer out of it and not just the answer that i could change our lives but i never did he's just a very complicated man that you know every time he didn't want to do anything with my mom. He thought that automatically he shouldn't do anything with me. So he would just be gone for six months, for four years at one point. Mm -hmm. um, I remember very vividly that he would come and stay with us for the weekend. And I would just be so happy that my mom and dad are together. And I would just be playing and I would just leave the room to go take something and come back. And he's just packing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand like my mom made him upset or whatever but he would just leave with no words like not even saying goodbye to me so, so if he was mad at your mom then you would basically were non-existent at that point exactly were they married no okay so they never got married no mm -hmm. they never lived together they lived in um two towns that were kind of 30 kilometers approximately 20 miles apart from each other and he would just come and stay with us for the weekend um but Never married. My mom was fully committed to him for like the full 20 years as I remember it. Uh -huh. Crazy woman. Because <laughs> uh, why? Um, but yeah. Um, That's very um, Balkan mom to like to do uh, because 20 she, years waiting for someone. She said she thought that it was better for me as a child to mm -hmm. at least play a family and have family like every once in a while than for her just to be with someone new and like traumatize me. And she didn't realize at the time, which I don't blame her, like she tried to do her best. She didn't realize it, how much traumatic it was for me to have a male role in my life that's just coming and leaving as he pleases. That deeply traumatized me as an adult. And you said he disappeared once for four years. And how is when he comes back? What do you say? That you just hug him? Or you're like, where have you been for four years? There's only one way for him to come back. Uh -huh. And that's to pick up the phone and call him. Mm -hmm. So you can call him after six months. You can call him after two days. He'll pick up and he'll come. But he won't, he won't pick up the phone to call you. So that was four years, probably my teenage age when I, you know, didn't really care for my parents at that time uh -huh. the most. Cause you know, you care for boyfriends, friends, whatever. Kids, kids, good. Exactly. So four years and after four years, I guess I just couldn't take it any longer. And I picked up the phone and, and he said, where have you been? I've missed you so much. Oh, okay. You know, so I love you. You know, I love you. I love the most of you. You're the best. You're my daughter. You're this, you're that. And then you just thought that that was normal because he made it seem like that's normal. Like, like that's well, your fault. Th well, that you didn't call him. I guess so. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's your fault or, you know, the destiny was in your hands. Why didn't you just pick up the phone and call me if you missed me? Mm -hmm. And um, how is your relationship with him now? So as an adult, I really tried to maintain the relationship with him in a healthier way. Uh, where my mom wasn't involved because it's different when like everything is going through mom and I also you know didn't want to hurt her um, even though she wanted me to have a relationship with him I kind of assumed me having a relationship with him would still hurt her so I would just hide that I was like talking to him just not to hurt her I never asked her but it just seemed like it so I really tried and we would talk but he's just he's really like mean Mm -hmm. He would call me um, animal names or fat or just like not be nice or oh. kind to me at all. Oh. And you never knew. Like one day I could just call him and he would be like, yeah, you know, I'm so proud of you. You're this, you're that. And the second time I could just call him and he could just be like, like saying nasty things to me and calling me out with the very 
very wrong names. So the last time I spoke with him was about uh, three years ago, as I assume. Uh -huh. And at that time, I already started my healing journey. Mm -hmm. And I understood what the toxicity in a relationship it is. And I learned a very important lesson. And that's that it doesn't matter if you share the same blood with someone or you share the same bed mm -hmm. with someone for 20 years. If they're toxic, they're toxic and it's time to let them go. So he said that he wishes I was never born. And I said, you will never hear from me again. And he never did. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, and he never will. <laughs> this is so important, what you just said. Because we tolerate so much because someone is family. Yeah. Do not talk how much we tolerate in a relationship, but there is so much. It's, oh, but it's my sister or it's my mom. It's my or, blood. Exactly. That does not prevent them from being toxic mm -hmm. um, towards you. And I am really glad, um, you know, you had that closure mm -hmm. and you now know what you want. And um, so good for you. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Tell me about um, a li little bit more as a as a child, like what kind of school did you go? What were your interests? Like what what you wanted to study? Maybe you can go to college already. So I was a geek. I uh -huh. I like had all straight A's my entire elementary school, my entire high school. I would just wake up five in the morning, study, study, study. It was all about the marks. And uh, that's a part of why my disease uh, happened later in life, which I uh -huh. understood was that pressure that I have put on myself or that my mom raising me has put on myself. Um, because Serbia is a very poor country. Mm -hmm. And uh, for that time, when I was being brought up, you had only one way out and that way is college. Mm -hmm. So my mom put a lot of pressure on me, um, you know, teaching me that I have to be the best student. I have to have all the A's. If I don't have all the A's, then I don't have the means to go to college. If I don't go to college, then what am I gonna do? I'll just, you know, work at a cash register or whatever, and then I'll have the same life that we've had because we grew up pretty poor and I did not want that. So I was like a machine. Like I'll still go out and be with my friends and have a boyfriend, but just, you know, studying was the most important thing to me since I was probably six years until I went to college. And uh, yeah, even past that. And tell me about the college, what you decided to. So it's funny thing you asked this because actually I have this video um, when I was maybe five or six years old mm -hmm. and my dad actually, cause he was, he was huge on cameras um, and he had camera back then in 1997, mm -hmm. like a wow. big one, real one. And you know, it was just fun for me as a kid. Uh, he asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, I want to be English language teacher, uh -huh. which is super interesting. And then the school started and I was really bad at English. So I didn't even think of it, but I was really bad. And uh, my mom made me start private school, like English private school. And I started it and I started loving it. And I was like, I don't understand this. I just didn't know English at all. And now I'm loving English so much. And fast forward to college, I was like, all right, well, I'm gonna be, you know, my major, I'm gonna major in English. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be a teacher. Um, I don't think teaching is for me, even though people do say that I kind of know how to teach well in general, whatever I teach about. But I just had a dream of working for American company. And that's the, the broad term because Serbia has a lot of American companies from yes, like Heineken. I don't even know. Cheap actually. labor. Cheap labor. <laughs> is Heineken American company? I, I don't think so. I think let's German, say foreign honestly. companies. Yeah. yeah, let's say foreign. But I know Coca-Cola was there. Microsoft, I, I worked there for six months briefly. NCR, National Cash Register, one of the huge. Um, oh, yeah. NCR, it's like everybody yeah. in Serbia works for NCR. Exactly. Yes. Well, at the time, no. But uh, now, yes, because now they're huge. But that was kind of my goal. I just wanted to work for American mm -hmm. company, have better working terms and, and like better salary and stuff like that. So that's what I went to college for, faculty of philology and majored in English and Spanish as minor. M wonderful. And you do speak fluent Spanish as well. I do. Um, I would say I speak it less than before because I used to practice a lot more. Mm -hmm. When I first came to the country, you know, I only had one option that was to be a waitress and a bartender. So that's what I did. And I used to practice a lot with the Mexican people that would work in that same industry. And I loved it. Um, it was like mantequilla, mantequilla all day. Uh, <laughs> but now I haven't been practicing that much in a long time. But I do love Spanish. Good. I'll practice Spanish with you because it is one of the most beautiful languages. But I totally agree 
like my memory of French because I lived in a mm -hmm. French family at one point in my life in France. And I remember having conversation about my father's wood company that I was <laughs> like, I was like, I was dead good in, in <laughs> French that I was able, because I, yeah. I, as you say, vividly remember the conversation yeah. and what we talked about, but I don't remember how was I able to say all of those <laughs> things because absolutely disappeared. So if you don't practice the language, it will happen. I agree. Especially since I didn't speak for French for over 10 years. So much have I forgotten. But the thing is, now when I see words, I immediately recognize yeah. them. Yeah. And when I hear, like I can recognize. So I, it's just a couple yeah. of days of Duolingo and, yeah. I and I should be back on track, <laughs> um, which I'm yet to do. But anyway, when was the first time you're realizing, oh, I can speak English? Did that happen already in high school through that private school that your mom put you in? Oh, yeah. Mm. It was actually even before that. Um, I started a private school when I was sixth grade. Um, so yeah, probably even eighth grade, mm -hmm. I could speak it, but, um, nothing as well as when I started the college and mm -hmm. especially when I moved to the States, when I was just exposed to the speaking of the language consistently, because I don't think nothing can teach you a language better than going to the native speaking country and actually just practice with the people. Perfect. So your native language is Serbian, right? Mm -hmm. Mine was too. <laughs> In school, my native language was Serbian. Do you know that now it's changed mm -hmm. and now the kids are learning Montenegrin uh, language in the school and that's what it's called. And it has oh, two wow. new letters too. New letters? Uh-huh. Um, sure. You know? Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about yeah. this in some other occasion. <laughs> yeah. People not understand this. Yeah. But yeah, because of the different accent and stuff, now it's called Montenegrin language. But anyway, okay. I learned Spanish second. Mm -hmm. I English was then my third language, yeah. maybe even fourth, because I yeah. learned Spanish, then French. Yeah. And then lastly, I was finally able to speak English. But do you know where I learned English, which is wild? Mexico? In Mexico. And people Yay. get so <laughs> surprised. How the hell did you went to I mean, Mexico? I'll be surprised too. I just know a lot about your because life. <laughs> I went to... Um, international mm -hmm. uh, college. It was yeah. Tecnológico de Monterrey, Campus Ciudad de México, but there was a lot of international students who didn't speak Spanish at all. And I was in a program with them. Mm -hmm. So in order to hang out with them, I was forced into speaking English. And I always thought that I don't know enough, but how I watched that Friends show so excessively mm -hmm. over and over, I was able to repeat 230 <laughs> episodes. Wow. And then when I enter into the conversation, I started actually saying sentences. And that's the first time that I was able to speak. So I came back from Mexico back to, because after that, I didn't go to Montenegro. I went to Belgrade, to Serbia too. And I came back speaking now Spanish and English too. And my friends were like, you're making up, like you don't speak <laughs> English. Because they remember from the high school, I was not good. Oh, well. Um, so I was like, yeah, like test me, you know, so <laughs> sorry, conversation and, um, uh, which is wild. So I love that, you know, sp you speak different languages and I love your, uh, passion for the Spanish language. Now let's go to the more serious topics. Um, how these weren't you? serious. Uh, no, this was for fun. <laughs> okay. This, it wasn't fun for you. <laughs> yeah. It was like, this is entertaining. Now right. let's go to, uh, maybe we'll wait a little bit to get to the educational part, but I just want to know, um, after college, a little bit of your life, and how did you end up in the United States, right? You live now here for how long? Uh, this is my ninth year. Ninth year. Okay, so you basically immigrated in 2015? Yes. Correct. Okay, same year. As I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, what made you do that? Good question. Love. Love, yes. really? Mm -hmm. Okay, for me, it was a better life. But tell me about. Tell I me was about happy with my life. Love. I'll be. I'll be honest. Um, life in Serbia wasn't bad for me at the time. After graduating from college, I actually worked at NCR at that time. And oh, you you got that American job you wanted? Yeah, I was at oh. Microsoft, and then I switched to NCR. Oh, so wow. I, I was living the life that I thought I wanted. The, okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. And then my boyfriend at the time um, of three years said, "Well, I think we should go." And I said, well, I don't. <laughs> so it ended up being his way. Uh, and we were, we just planned to come here for about five years and get enough money to go back and like buy a property of our own and then mm -hmm. just be able to live there. And um, then life happened and I'm still here. 
Perfect. So what he was like, let's go. We are going to United States. We're going to Chicago. Yeah, we actually, because we were on master's at the time. Mm -hmm. So we came on a J-1 program. Which is work and travel yes, visa, which is right? Work and Easier travel. for people to understand what a J-1 is. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a work and travel for people who are still at college. So we, mm -hmm. we started master's and... Um, the only bigger city they offered to get a job was Chicago. I knew mm -hmm. nothing about Chicago. I knew nothing about the violence. I knew nothing about the windy city. I knew nothing about the climate. What violence you're talking about? <laughs> Chicago is the best city in the world. <laughs> I didn't say it's not the best, but there mm -hmm. is some definitely violence uh, happening. But I didn't know about absolutely anything. I just said, oh, it's a big city. All right, let's go. And I was very, very, very culturally shocked when I arrived here. Mm -hmm. in 2015 it was you know upon arriving i thought it's the best city i've ever seen in my entire life the skyscrapers mm -hmm. even though i was in new york uh in 2012 and 13 also with the same program um but chicago just absolutely blew my mind away the mm -hmm. lake the the beach that the lake city is like an ocean and it's like so beautiful but come on where do you have a city that has such big skyscrapers but the lake is right next to there's a beach next to skyscrapers mm -hmm. you don't i don't think you get that in any city and uh, it's so beautiful in the entire united states it's, so yeah i sit on a bike down that that yeah. um you know lake shore drive mm -hmm. and go and one side yeah. it's ocean for me that michigan yeah. lake will forever be ocean it's so beautiful <laughs> color is beautiful and then the city on another side mm -hmm. that's just it's captivating skyline mm -hmm. and i'm like oh my god it gives me energy to mm -hmm. bike i'm mm -hmm. like i'm so strong now i yeah. can go for <laughs> miles and miles just taken by that beauty of the city uh so i adore chicago and then um you were still not experiencing any health issues um, back in Serbia or that started when you arrived to the United States? And so what I recall is that in Serbia I was perfectly healthy, but now, you know, thinking about that, I definitely noticed that I have struggled before with um, some digestive issues that I didn't really understand why they were happening, but mostly caused by stress. But technically, if we were to say I did not experience anything until I came here, which was in 2015, May 25th, I arrived May 26th. And the next year, January 2016, mm -hmm. is um, the month when my first health issue started. What was that? What did it feel like? I was in a gym and I went to take shower. And as I was showering, I discovered a lump in my left breast. Mm -hmm. And uh, my grandma had cancer and my aunt had cancer and they both had their breasts removed. Mm -hmm. So I was in complete shock and just not understanding that a 25 year old at that time could have a lump in their left breast, you know, that's mm -hmm. kind of reserved for older people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I shouldn't be experiencing that. And at the time I didn't even have health insurance. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do, but I found a clinic in Wisconsin cause it was cheaper. Um, and I went to see what's going on. Maybe it's just a cyst. Maybe I'm just, you know, overreacting. Uh, long story short, they found that it wasn't a cyst. It was a mass. So they needed to do a biopsy and see whether it's benign or it's cancer. Luckily, it did turn out that it was benign, but it still was not very comfortable. And they did advise me to remove it as soon as I possibly can. So mm -hmm. upon going to Serbia at the end of that year, I had removed and the doctor the doctor actually said that it's a good thing I removed it because it grew very fast from 14 millimeters to over two centimeters. Oh, wow. And uh, people who don't use metric system maybe won't know, but it almost doubled in size. And mm -hmm. it was actually three of them and very deep to my ribs. Mm -hmm. So they removed all three of them. And um, I've never had any other issue regarding my breasts since then. Mm -hmm. What, but then you had some other <clears throat> health issues starting. How long, Plenty. After, <laughs> how long after that? Um, well, uh, I can't really tell you how long. It's just, if, if I take into consideration all these nine years, mm -hmm. it was just a lot. It was like one thing after another. First, it was that a uh, breast lump and then uh, short after that I would maybe say a year later let's say mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with a severe depression disorder mm -hmm. um, and the generalized anxiety disorder mm -hmm. so that was something new that I've never I've never even heard of the word depression and anxiety before mm -hmm. to be honest and even when I heard it like depressed I kind of connected it with a state of being sad 
Mm -hmm. So I really want to actually clear this up for people who are going to be listening to this because um, I get very upset as someone who's been through that, that we use the word depression so often and so lightly. Like, oh, my boyfriend left me, I'm depressed. Oh, the weather is so depressing. Oh, the song is depressing. No, the song could be sad. Depression is a very serious state of mind where the chemistry of your brain is completely, completely changed. Mm -hmm. You're not capable of experiencing any sort of happiness. Mm -hmm. Your hormones of happiness are not being excreted. You're having a lot of um, stress hormones. You're having a lot of feelings that you cannot just shake off. And sometimes when we're trying to help people who are depressed, we say, well, you need to snap out of it. Mm -hmm. It's not a state you can snap out of it. The episode of depression usually lasts between six to eight months. So it's not something you can just snap out of in two days or think positively. Mm -hmm. It's a very serious condition and I just wish that people knew more of it. I wish schools taught more of it. And ultimately I do wish that they, um, that we all could learn more about how to heal it truly mm -hmm. and not just mask it and suppress it with the antidepressants and SSRIs. I do want to ask you about your healing process, but besides that, um, there were more things because I know based on your um, mm -hmm. Instagram bio, there is a, you said severe IBD, yeah. right? There's a hair loss. Expl mm -hmm. Explain to people what I IBD is. Yeah. So after that, I I'll just like uh, briefly tell you that after the depression and anxiety, which was a, a huge battle for me, I did experience miscarriage, which is also another thing I really wish we could talk about more. Mm -hmm. Um, and ultimately it did lead to a severe case of IBD, which is inflammatory bowel disease, better mm -hmm. known as Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. So it can be either, or, or it can be both at the same time, which is still not hundred percent sure which one do I have? So I might even have both. Um, now what it is, do you want my <laughs> knowledge and opinion or do you want what doctors will tell you? I, I want yours. Yes. And from your experiences and everything that you were learning about it from. So I'll just briefly tell you that in the medical world, um, mm -hmm. ulcerative colitis is a autoimmune disease where the body is attacking itself and there is nothing they can do. They don't know what causes it. They don't know how to heal it. They just know how to suppress it with very strong medication, immunosuppressants, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes steroids or completely removing your gut. Mm -hmm. um, they say it's a disease that you will have for the rest of your life and they don't know what causes it. Just the body's attacking itself. Mm -hmm. That's a brief explanation from the medical world. From my standpoint, after all of the books, all of the research, all of the clients I've had and my own personal experience, um, the body is not attacking itself. The body is attacking something that it doesn't recognize in your body. Defending so itself, basically. Body. It's trying to defend itself, correct. So what happens is that we live a life where we're stressed out. They're very highly stressed out individuals. You wake up in the morning, there is alarm clock, you're stressed out, just like those sirens that would stress out when we were kids and the bombing would happen. So you wake up you're wake, uh, you wake up with an alarm clock, then you're rushing in an hour, hour and a half traffic to get to work. 90% of people, I will say, probably 90% of people do jobs they don't love. Mm -hmm. They're stressed out. Coworkers are stressing them out, boss is stressing them out, finances are stressing them out. They're again, working 10, 12 hour shifts. They're again, running back home for an hour, hour and a half. Then they're making dinners for kids, trying to get themselves together. They have no time for themselves. They have no time to eat healthy. So with the entire stress that the modern age is carrying, then we have the comparison on social media. This person is having such a good life. Why am I not having it? And just the, um, I call it the Kardashian syndrome. Mm -hmm. And um, added the processed foods we're eating and the SAD diet, the standard American diet, mm -hmm. and then add the overuse of antibiotics and the over-the-counter medication. We create microscopic holes in our intestines that are um, widely known as leaky gut. So what happens is that all the feces and the bacteria that are lying in your intestines are leaking through those microscopic holes and going into your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. The body doesn't recognize it because why are feces in your blood? Why is that bacteria in your blood? And the body starts defending itself by attacking it. It's not attacking you. Your body loves you. Your body would never attack you. Your body has been through so much and it's still here mm -hmm. and fighting for you, but it's attacking it. Mm -hmm. So once we learn how to heal the... Um, outer lining of our intestinal, uh, of our colon, and we fix it and there's nothing else leaking, the disease magically disappears. Mm -hmm. Which 
at the moment is being claimed that you cannot heal it, right? Like yeah. a medical world. Um, I was recently reading a lot about it because my friend's dog got diagnosed with it and literally said... Dog? Th- dog. Mm-hmm. Um, and it literally said that, that it's not something that they can heal, but just to maintain. Um, and I immediately thought of you. And mm-hmm. I really... It's wild how similar uh, humans and dogs are. Yeah. And I read it's the same... Um, as you would call them, inflammatory ingredients that would be causing that. But let's go to the food. Okay, I really want to talk huh. to... Let me uh, grab some water. Yes, please. Um, you think that literally every single bite that you take and every single ingredient works the important role in, for your body and for your health. So tell me basically in a how would you describe your your food choices what do you eat what do you don't um i'm just gonna lightly correct you mm-hmm. it's not i think it's i know okay i i love it at this point i i know there's no way around it mm-hmm. it's not my opinion because i wanted to correct this because a lot of times people are trying to argue with me and i have a page uh, on instagram mostly that I just used to educate. I don't really like arguing with people. Mm -hmm. I don't like um, defending and justifying my choices. These are my choices. I'm going to tell you my discoveries and you can choose whatever you want to do with that information. Mm -hmm. But I cannot argue with someone that meat is good for you because first he has to explain or she, they have to explain to me where their knowledge is coming from. Mm -hmm. Like, is this something you think based off of the idea that you cannot live without eating a burger? Mm Mm-hmm. And, you know, just that thought about not having chicken wings or a burger is like making you stressed out and you want to argue with me. Or is this really coming from a scientific field? Mm -hmm. Because what's behind my knowledge is science. Mm -hmm. This is not, you know, wickedy whack. This is science. Okay. Science based on doctors that are not corrupted. Okay. Science based on doctors that committed their lives actually reversing diseases and chronic conditions and autoimmune diseases Mm -hmm. on extreme number of people. And there is a lot of research behind this. It's just not the research that that reaches mainstream media because then it it wouldn't be really, you know, productive for certain individuals. So to go back to your question. um, Uh, I I have another question now since you're speaking about it and you say meat. Um, Is meat healthy for us? Yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Is any meat? People say, oh, I'm trying to cut a red meat, but I'll eat chicken. Is chicken healthier? Chicken is the single biggest cause of stomach uh, cancers as well mm-hmm. as high blood pressure. So it's just mind blowing to me to see people who are trying to follow a diet for high blood pressure and not salting chicken when there is a ton of sodium actually inside the chicken because mm-hmm. that's what they put inside of it. So to answer your question, is meat healthy for us? No. Any meat? No. Red meat? No. Chicken? No. Fish? No. There is, there is no meat that it's There is good- no meat that's good and healthy for us. We were not meant to eat meat. The way our teeth are compared mm-hmm. to animals that do eat meat, it's not the same. Mm-hmm. Our teeth are of those animals like monkeys that don't eat meat. Mm-hmm. And our intestines are so long. Our intestines are as long as we're tall. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about six feet of intestines. What do you think happens with all that meat that's just rotting inside of you? Imagine leaving meat, cooked meat, on a room temperature for three days. People don't even have it regular bowel movements. Poison and, exactly. And so imagine what's in happening the in the inside of your intestines. We were not born to eat meat. It's just we were just never never designed for it. And when people start telling me how, you know, people, I don't even know how many years ago, well, listen, it's different. Exactly. We cannot really compare to the age. We're not still living in that age. And also, that's why there was evolution. Mm-hmm. You know, we, evo- we, we, we went through evolution in every single way. Mm-hmm. And so did the way that our organs work. And so does everything else. Mm-hmm. So we don't live in that age anymore. If you think we do, then, you know, drop your phone and go back to the cave age because we're not there anymore. Okay, perfect. Um, but what to say to people, so it's very well known that I don't eat meat myself, 
Um, but there's a lot of people who would say like, oh, but everything in moderation, we need both. We need meat and we need plants. We need a combination. We need protein. Like what's, what is your response to that? I usually don't respond mm -hmm. uh, unless they're really asking. Unless you're in a podcast. Unless I'm in a podcast. Yes, <laughs> okay. I, I know. I'm, I'm really trying to avoid any sort of confrontation when it comes to these uh, mm -hmm. these issues, because like I said, I'm there to educate and you can do whatever you want with that information. If someone is really looking at an answer because they really want to learn, then I'm very eager to educate, but I'm not there to argue. So um, protein. OK, so let's start with animals. Where do animals get the protein from? From the plants. All right. <laughs> so why are we using the middleman to get the same protein when we can just go to the source? It really makes no sense. People say we need protein. Yes, we do. We need plant protein because complete protein means it contains nine essential amino acids. There's 20 amino acids in total. Okay. Mm -hmm. 11 are non-essential and nine are essential. Every plant contains all 20 amino acids. Mm -hmm. Some contain more of it. Some contain less. So you can pick how you want to get enough amount of protein per day. Do you want to use complete protein that for example, quinoa is or pistachios are or the mama tofu that's called complete protein has all nine amino acids in a large quantities, or you will have avocado and kale and lettuce and spinach and get two, three amino acids per plant. And then they will all combine and kind of create a protein to, to kind of for visualization. Do you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And, and then they created that protein that you need. Um, I check my protein levels. My protein levels are perfect. Mm -hmm. I don't only check my protein levels. I check my B12 levels. People think we need B12. Yes, we do. But you know why? Because the soil doesn't have B12 anymore. So even animals are getting supplemented with B12 nowadays. Mm -hmm. Soil is depleted. Normally, animals eat from the ground and they pick up the B12 from the soil. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we could use you know that flesh to get B12. But now they don't even get it from the soil. They get it from the supplement. So again, I'd rather just go to the source and get a B12 supplement than eat an animal that was supplemented with the B12. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't really make sense. Um, and I'm sorry, I just have to say this. Uh, you said, what do I think about people who think in moderation? Um, so I do think if you don't want to be plant-based and mm -hmm. you want to be, I just, I, I love saying plant-based because being, uh, whole foods plant-based and being vegan are two completely different things yeah, when it comes to when it comes to eating as well uh, i am not a vegan that eats you know chips and coca-cola mm -hmm. like I, I i like doing the whole food plant-based diet where mm -hmm. 80 percent of my food is not processed and if somebody is not willing to give up on their lifestyle i uh, think for their health i'm just going to speak from that aspect yeah, yeah, if they want to eat uh two times a week they want to do five ounces of wild caught fish and they want to do five ounces, two times a week of pasture raised chicken, that will not significantly damage their health. I, I do truly believe that 80, 20 rule can be applied to anything. Mm -hmm. So if that's what they want, that's perfectly fine. But I don't think that it's normal to eat sausage and bacon. Mm -hmm. So if, when I'm talking about chicken or meat, I'm talking about clean meat, not overly processed bacon and sausage that even World Health Organization classifies as carcinogen type one. Number carcinogen one, yes. type one means that it causes cancer, like in people. There's a people, strong evidence. That strong evidence and not in animals, in people. And it's next to asbestos and next to cigarettes. Mm -hmm. So how can you feed this to your child every morning knowing this? It's just, I, I don't know. I just don't understand. Mm-hmm. You didn't know all of these things and you ate meat and then it, yes. caused, it caused you to get very sick. Um, and how does your healing process start? How you know, where did you start getting your information? Let me now try to reverse this disease with food. Where you get that information? So first of all, uh, and Neiman, I just want to be uh, very straightforward when I say that food is not everything. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, cannot yeah. just use food. Yeah. So food is a part of it. For some people, food is a huge part of it. For some people, it's not actually that big of a part if they're carrying such a huge trauma. So when I work with my clients, which is what I do now, um, I have to go through everything, what they're eating, what they're not eating, what's mm -hmm. eating them. Mm -hmm. How are they sleeping? How much water they're drinking? Are they active? Are they taking enough supplements? Which supplements they're taking? Are they just wasting their time taking vitamin C and E and zinc and stuff? You can literally get so easily from the food or they're really using supplements that they truly need. And 
I'm very sad to say that a lot of my clients even go to alternative medicine doctors and they just put them on $600 a month protocols, just like bombard them with supplements. So mm -hmm. no, healing is so much more than just food, but you have to start from the food. Yes. Because food will then control how much energy you have to go and work out mm -hmm. and vice versa. So it's like a circle. You can't get out of it without changing one. And then the next one won't happen without changing the yeah. food. I want to focus on the food because I think it's the most common and mm -hmm. I'm coming from my experience. I don't think I lead a very stressful life or mm -hmm. anything like that because only thing that goes in my body, it's food and water mm -hmm. and drinks that I take. So I want to learn more about it. Sure. I want to learn. I want people who are watching this podcast to learn about that. How are you learning where your information about yeah. the food started? So it started back in 2020. Um, it just started by visiting, um, like I've said, the alternative medicine doctors, mm -hmm. which I think the Western medicine doctors should be alternative. And these okay. should be the regular standard uh, doctors you go to that heal you with plants, right? Okay. Because uh, why go to the lab if you can start from the plants? But um, long story short, I went from a doctor to doctor. It was a doctor of functional medicine. It was a homeopathic doctor. It was a Chinese herbalist. It was a Chinese, Chinese medicine doctor. And I've picked up a few bits mm -hmm. and pieces of information from each and every one of them. Also, I do think that a huge flaw in uh, the system today is that we don't have the right test results. So I hate when someone tells me, um, well, my results are great. Mm -hmm. My blood is perfect. When <laughs> seriously, by the time something is wrong, it, there is something really wrong in your mm -hmm. body. There's so many more tests that we need and that are so much more important. Um, to see how exactly we're doing. One of them would be the micronutrient panel. So we have macronutrients, which is protein, carbohydrates, and uh, fats. And we have micronutrient profile, which is all of the minerals and vitamins in human body. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody today is just focused on protein, on macronutrients. Am I on keto? Am I high fat? Am I low fat? Am I low carb? But we're not talking about, are we getting enough minerals and vitamins? Are we getting enough fiber? Mm -hmm. People are being told that it's normal to go you know, um, number two, <laughs> uh, once every six days. Uh -huh. And that it's just absolutely completely ridiculous. Imagine if you're having three meals a day, where is all that food going? Mm -hmm. You know, so micronutrient profile is one of the very important ones. Also, um, heavy metals. Mm -hmm. I really wish people understood more about heavy metals. It starts from whether their house was built before 1960s, which mm -hmm. is they will have lead pipes. It starts whether they're eating uh, eating or drinking from a can. Mm -hmm. It starts whether they're eating fish. Fish is not only loaded with mercury. They say I'm eating, eating low mercury fish, but it's not only the mercury, mercury being the problem. And uh, how about the Fukushima explosion that happened? What do they think that happened with all those metals that are just everywhere in the ocean, everywhere in the sea, literally mm -hmm. touching every single water that exists on planet earth. It's in our fish. Mm -hmm. Not only that fish has so much parasites in them. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge issue. Doing those tests and seeing how our heavy metals in our body are doing is huge because all of the pathogens are feeding off of the heavy metals in our body. That's literally like superfoods for them. And chicken, highest source of arsenic. Rice, highest source of arsenic. Chocolate, highest source of lead and cadmium. So it's not just about chicken. And I hate when people make it to be vegans versus carnivores. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not from that world. And I don't, yeah, I don't yeah, ever want to. I don't, want, I don't ever want to be. It's more about learning about truly what's happening with your food, including plant food like rice, mm -hmm. like corn. I wouldn't recommend anybody eating corn who is struggling with the mm -hmm. health issue because corn has 25 different types of aflatoxins, which is a mold that's just growing on the corn or peanuts. Peanuts have 21 different types of aflatoxins. Mm -hmm. That's very carcinogenic for your liver. Also, corn can be very abrasive. Popcorn is very abrasive for someone that is having digestive issues or having intestinal bleeding, like people who are struggling with IBD or people struggling with IBS. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about animal food. It's about you have to learn everything. So I learned from the doctors, I learned from the books, I learned from um, from documentaries. I learned from people that I connected all over the world because I was desperate. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask everybody who have this disease and that have healed, every time I would hear on podcasts or whatever, I would contact this person and say, hey, how did this happen to you? And just there is an overwhelming amount of evidence that mm -hmm. the lifestyle changes will heal you from autoimmune and chronic conditions. And you said you were seeking that information because you were so sick, right? 
yeah, tell me about that. You, um, there, there were moments where you were thinking that you're not going to make it. It was really bad. I love saying that half the day I pray to heal and half the day I pray to die. But I'm so glad the healing part prevailed because it seems you went out there for that information that you needed. You were fighting. <sighs> yeah. Um, that was probably one of the worst times of my life. Mm -hmm. I can imagine. Yeah. It's just, you don't know what's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. You don't understand it. And their answer of, we don't know what causes it. This is the medication is just not cutting it for me. You know, mm -hmm. I like to consider myself as a smart woman and you as a doctor just telling me, you don't know what causes it. Here's the medication. See you in three months. Just wasn't cutting it. Mm -hmm. I said, something is wrong here. I need to learn more. And I wish that that was truly the answer. I just take a pill for the rest of my life and I'm fine. And I can still eat my pizza and my cookies and my burgers at the time, mm -hmm. you know, because I love that food. I did not stop eating that food because I don't think that food is tasty. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I think that food, well, not anymore, but I mm -hmm. did think for a while that that food is absolutely delicious. And that food kept me addicted because they, they keep adding a lot of additives and, and preservatives to food to just make it you know, addictive, so that addictive, so that you keep coming score. back. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and when you gather all of this information, you still don't know in that moment if it works or not, because you're sick. No, um, but you're deciding to try. Oh, my God, it was so much trial and error. Mm -hmm. You have no idea. I would try to go from medical medium protocol and just use a lot of celery juice and, you know, trying to go on a cleanse that completely destroyed my body. Not mm -hmm. saying that his cleanses are not good and the celery juice is not good. It just was not for a person who was having 15 loose bowel movements at the mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. with so much blood coming out of me that at one point I just thought I was just going to bleed to death. Mm -hmm. I stopped walking. I stopped talking because of the exhaustion. The pain that you can feel in your body from how inflamed your intestines were is just, uh, it's its indescribable. Your CRP levels, which are the hormones, um, uh, CRP levels, which is uh, the protein that's being excreted by the liver to just to show that there is inflammation in your body and that's normal to be under three, in some cases under one, was over 400. Mm -hmm. And that was so much inflammation that my body just couldn't, couldn't take the pain. I remember being hospitalized and literally screaming from pain while being on morphine. Mm -hmm. It was just intolerable. Um, now tell me when the better days started coming. I want to know about that. So it was a lot of ups and downs, like a lot. And um, the situation that I told you from the beginning, when my dad said that he wishes I wasn't born, happened maybe two weeks or three weeks before I had my first hospitalization. Mm -hmm. So it was just a huge amount of stress and I was already not too well, but that kind I think pushed the edge and some of the other moments that happened in my private life, um, which is what led me to be hospitalized. So I think leading to hospitalization, um, it was just up and down, up and down, because I did not do the right protocol, mm -hmm. which is why I am extremely passionate. I'm extremely passionate about helping anybody, but when I see an IBS or IBD person coming to me, I just get so excited because I know they're knocking at the right door. Mm -hmm. Like I hundred percent at this time have perfected what works well for IBD and for IBS, which I honestly don't think that maybe 0.1 people in this planet know. And I have, um, doctors whose uh, books and consultations are to, I took that actually charge a lot of money for these consultations that I learned from, which I'm very happy that that happened. Mm -hmm. um, so seeing my clients now come and see people who have struggled with IBS for 20 years, literally 20 years with 12 bowel movements every day, your life, it's not living, it's surviving. Mm -hmm. You cannot function as a normal human being. You cannot go to functions because you're literally, you know, scared that you're going to just mm -hmm. have a bowel moment unexpectedly at an event and a function. I got married in a diaper for God's sake. Um, so I can understand that pain. Um, let me ask you a little bit more than on a, on a personal side, not just about a health. 
um, the boyfriend you came with United States is no longer in the picture, right? No. Okay. And then you um, started another relationship, right? And you um, got married and got a daughter. I did. Right? Yeah. Um, she's so cute. <laughs> Thank you. Um, her name is Helena. Yes. Um, she's adorable. You implemented so many things of what you know mm -hmm. um, in the way you uh, raising her mm -hmm. um, and with the food. What does Helena eat? Um, Helena, I would say, eats probably 80% of what I eat, mm -hmm. minus the salads. She's still not there. The only salad she would have is uh, cucumbers and tomatoes, uh -huh. which I'll still take it. You know, she yeah. likes, yeah, or she likes chewing on like raw red peppers and uh, celery sticks. So, you know, that's perfectly fine. But <laughs> I'm just, you know, dreaming of the day when she would have a salad with me. <laughs> I adore those videos and I want you to talk about it because I think if any parent is watching this and it's wondering how do I convince my child to eat the celery stick, right? And you always talk about that. Uh, building a palate, right? Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit more about that, like how you think mm -hmm. Helena loves so much uh, the the food that you give her, which many kids won't eat. Uh, yeah, red pepper and tomato and cucumber and celery. How did you manage for her to love all of those things? She's convinced that that's a snack, that that's a treat. <laughs> Well, first of all, I have to say, I believe everything in life happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. And even though if you take a look at my life where, you know, I had um, dead abandonment issues and I had a lot of diseases that happened and um, ultimately I have a failed marriage or whatnot, I think everything led me to where I am today. So why my ulcerative colitis developed in seven months of pregnancy when actually majority of people that have autoimmune conditions, it completely clears up while they're pregnant. For me, it started then. I think it was just meant to be for me to learn about what true health is while I was pregnant or while I was nursing her after that. Like before she even started taking any food, mm -hmm. I already knew about everything. Mm -hmm. So what am I trying to get here at is that it's very easy when you start them young. Exactly. And she literally, that's all she knows since she was born. Mm -hmm. I She was breastfed for a full year. And after six months, she would just have purees. There were just organic butternut squash and sweet potato and uh, zucchini. And so like, that's kind of how she develop her palate. So what happens is that when a child grows up in a household where there's a lot of processed candies and a lot of processed meats and a lot of cold cuts and pizzas and French fries and, you know, microwave foods, uh, that's what our you know, our palate just gets used to. So it's very hard to say to a child, like I make mac and cheese for Helena and the cheese is made from, you know, potatoes and carrots with some cashews. So mm -hmm. if previous to that, for years, she was eating the microwave mac and cheese from a real cheese, it would be very hard for me to convince her that now this is mac and cheese. Yeah. I I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm definitely mm -hmm. saying it's possible. I'm just saying that it's it a lot harder. harder. Correct. Mm -hmm. And... Um, that's definitely number one advice I can give is just start them as young as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. The second advice I like to give is you have to lead with an example. Mm -hmm. I get very triggered when I see parents eating a cake and trying to give the kid broccoli. Mm -hmm. That's just not fair. Mm -hmm. They're also, they're also, you know, human beings and they're oh, seeing exactly. you eat this devouring, this delicious cake you know, chocolate and, you know, making faces while getting at it. And they're supposed to eat broccoli. If you, if you, if you ask me, would, would I rather eat, you know, I'm not really big into sweets, but if you ask me if I'd rather have a sandwich or broccoli, I'd rather have a sandwich. I am mm -hmm. consciously making a decision not to eat sandwich and eat broccoli because I just know it's better for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, when I say sandwich, I don't mean like the healthier yeah. versions of sandwich with healthy breads you can make. I'm just talking about literally yeah. Jimmy John's sandwich. Yes. Perfect. Um, and then um, so she's growing up. It's just so fascinating. I've never seen a kid uh, making yummy noises when uh, yeah. uh, eats uh, celery when she drank your juice. or the juice. Yeah, let's. Uh, we we have to try. A I am bit. taking that juice for Helena, just so you know. Oh, okay. Well, I should get you another one. <laughs> she's been asking about it all the time. She she loves it, right? She Which, loves it, and you know what I love? I'm so proud of her because Helena for the 
like longest time. Now she's being more and more aware. She's almost four and now mm -hmm. she's going to birthday parties. But for the longest time, she wouldn't even notice when she sees like the juices at a store, she would see apples and she would say, mommy, get us apples so we can make apple juice. Mm -hmm. And I was so proud. I'm like, she understands that the food comes like from the right source, not from a prepackaged like, you know, mm -hmm. box. Mm -hmm. So that's just absolutely wonderful. No, that's incredible. Like the, I think the best thing you have done in life, it's the way I agree. You, um, you are raising her and I'm just a huge fan of it and huge fan of hers. Like I'm always waiting for a new <laughs> video. Um, let's go back to the healing process. Um, you eventually overcome all of those. You, you also mentioned you struggle with a hair loss. So this is the thing. When I first started healing, I didn't even understand everything I struggled with. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a very interesting thing because um, being a woman, obviously, I've had, you know, a menstrual cycle my entire, well, my entire life since I was 11 or 12, majority uh -huh. of my life. And they were very painful. Mm -hmm. And I did not understand that a menstrual cycle, it's not supposed to be painful. Mm -hmm. I don't think people understand that because I don't, it is. I, this is the first time I hear that. It's, it's like, very common. Uh -huh. So today we have a problem where people think what's common is normal mm -hmm. and it's not normal. So uh, maybe just a few months into my healing, I have noticed that my cycle went by completely painless, that mm -hmm. I was shocked. And at some points I would just literally survive these days, mm -hmm. laying in bed, you know, I would just want to eat chocolate. I was very moody. I was very crabby. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of memes. So we think it's normal how, you know, boyfriends are supposed to like do everything for their girlfriends or partners or wives when they're when they're on their cycle because they're they're moody, they're hormonal. No, they're just not healthy. Mm -hmm. They're not healthy because of the amount of hormones we're putting and ingesting inside of our body and not the ones that comes from soy. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's different. That's phytoestrogen. That has nothing to do with a real estrogen. Uh -huh. But I'm talking about toxic perfumes. I'm talking about perfumes that they put in detergents. I'm talking about a bunch of chemicals that are allowed here to still be put in our food and our cosmetics. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about chicken being raised on hormones and a bunch of hormones being inside of our body where they don't belong that, there. And I'm talking about eggs being the chicken's ovulation mm -hmm. or an abortion that we're ingesting. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about milk because you know how much hormones is in a milk? That's a mom who just had a baby. Mm -hmm. I'm a mom. I know how hormonal I was when I had a baby. That's just a load of hormones that we're excreting into milk and then processing into even more processed cheese and adding additives and then shoving it down our throat. Sounds awful to me. It sounds awful, but it also sounds like a hormonal bomb. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so what you are saying, and I love it, this could be a huge take from this episode. So um, a menstrual cycle is not supposed to be painful. No. And there is a way to make it that way yes. by eating right. God never meant for you to suffer. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if you believe in God, Allah, Buddha, universe, whatever you believe in, you have to believe in some higher force. Okay. We're, we're all here for a reason. No higher force ever wanted you to suffer. Like, That's no higher force ever wanted you to suffer. Why would they do that to you? Being a woman, mm -hmm. having a reproductive organ that creates life, mm -hmm. that carries a child for nine months, that automatically makes breast milk when your child comes out, actually starts being produced at 14 weeks of pregnancy, mm -hmm. that automatically starts flowing when your child cries. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew that info too, but when your child cries, your milk immediately starts flowing. I had, I did How not can know. a system be that perfect, yet God wanted you to be in bed for seven days with dealing with your cramps? Mm -hmm. He didn't. Okay, and he gave us the, all the fruits and veggies that you know, we can eat, but we decided to build the knives and the guns and kill animals and eat them. And that's, and that's what it's causing all these diseases. And then there. add all the processed stuff and then mm -hmm. process it even more. And then use the barbecues because the smoke from the barbecue is extremely carcinogenic. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, we also decided to put all the chemicals in the cosmetics and put it in our face. Average woman has over 50 chemicals on her body as you look at her, how she showered, uh, uh, if she washed her hands, if she brushed her teeth and she put her makeup, we're looking at least at 50 chemicals. Wow. It shouldn't be there. And now mm -hmm. every fourth pregnancy ends up with miscarriage. And that's what- Is I, that a coincidence? Mm -hmm. That's what I hear. Um, so um, your 
I want to all again go back to your healing because I just really, it's such a powerful story. Of it's extraordinary, as I would say. Um, you managed to, to snap out of it for the first time, right? Yes. Not snap out of it, but yes, worked very hard for, for years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people sometimes get impatient. Mm -hmm. But why is this not happening in two weeks? Well, your disease took decades to develop. That's why I said your body loves you. Because I was doing this to my body for 28 years before mm -hmm. my body said, you know what, I give up. My body, your body, everybody's body whispers. Mm -hmm. It gives you migraine. It gives you a painful cycle. It gives you bloating. It gives you, you know, occasional issues here and there. It's whispering and saying something is wrong. Mm -hmm. you need to fix me you need to look into me and then you're like nah i'm too busy i'm chasing after this dream job i'm chasing after bigger home i'm chasing after better car i'm chasing after this or that mm -hmm. and then your body ends up saying you know what i'm gonna stop whispering now i'm gonna start screaming and mm -hmm. then a huge disease happens cancer happens autoimmune condition chronic chronic condition chronic disease infertility endometriosis you know whatever it is then something big happens mm -hmm. um I want to mention your mom. Mm -hmm. um, she ate plant-based before you. Yes. How did that happen? Yes, very great question, especially for my mom being Serbian. And, you know, meat is a huge part of our Absolutely. culture. Meat and dairy, eggs mm -hmm. maybe not even, but meat and dairy definitely huge. Um, well, eggs too, I guess. So about 16 years ago, I mentioned that my aunt had breast cancer and mm -hmm. she had her breast removed. And my mom um, came in touch with... Um, someone who recommended her a book called How I Beat the Cancer in 10 Steps mm -hmm. uh, by Dr. Loring Day. She is a surgeon from California mm -hmm. that had a breast cancer stage four. It was as big as grapefruit. She literally had to carry it around in her mm -hmm. um, in her hand, how big of, of uh, the cancer it was. And Dr. Lauren Day actually didn't want any surgery. She didn't want any chemotherapy. She didn't want to do anything being a doctor mm -hmm. at stage four when you think you're done, right? Mm -hmm. That's like the last stage. And she just did her research and then she wrote a book, how eating plant-based foods and how forgiving people for hurting her and how praying to God and how changing her lifestyle actually healed her from cancer. And she's actually to this day still alive and well. Mm -hmm. So my mom read that book and she just decided that it was just time for her to change the way she was eating and she never looked back. Mm -hmm. She was mostly vegetarian. Um, mm -hmm. She still consumed some dairy and some eggs, mm -hmm. but after I have switched, um, I'm not allowing that to happen anymore. <laughs> uh -huh. Good. Good. So now I'm the her. Because you want your mom to l live long, um, you know, and to be You healthy. know what, Neiman? Uh, my mom actually has cystic breasts mm -hmm. and at the last... Um, ultrasound she has done after I convinced her to switch to non-toxic cosmetics, which was the hardest part. Cause you know, she likes her laundry smelling the certain way. And she mm -hmm. likes, you know, those chemicals I can't even stand now when I pass by them. But uh, I convinced her to do that because that's a huge, huge uh, source of hormones and to stop fully eating dairy and eggs. Even the ultrasound lady, the radiologist was kind of like, I don't understand. These seem to be shrinking. Mm -hmm. That's so good. But I understood. Yeah, it's amazing. That's amazing. It's so incredible how the lifestyle, it can heal so many things and just the food that we were meant to eat from the day one. Um, yes, and I just have to add, uh, my mom doesn't understand English, but if she's watching this, uh, I just want to say it like this, that I really owe her an apology uh, for all the times when I was just swinging bacon in front of her face and just uh, like, what, well, you're not eating this, you're not, oh my God, you're so weird. Uh -huh, because yeah. she was trying to tell you. Yes. Right? She didn't want me to get sick. Obviously, she was trying to tell me that. I think my mom is living her best life now. Seeing <laughs> <laughs> she probably can't even believe it. She thinks she's still dreaming. <laughs> me becoming who I am today. <laughs> uh, yes, because that's who she wanted you to become. But you. She was dying to share this information with me, but I was just so closed off. Mm -hmm. you, you, that's the thing. You can't change a child at 16 years old. Mm -hmm. And that it's not feeling sick. Like, I think that's a majority of the people, they will start listening when there is no longer option. But I would also met people who are sick. They would get very defensive and defend their choices and would claim that that's not what it's making them sick. They're would scared. Drink alcohol, would drink alcohol and then complain about being sick the five days after that. And I'm like, well, that's still from that Saturday night. 
Um, <laughs> and they got very defensive. Um, so um, people are very scared. Mm -hmm. They're scared. Uh, they love living in a comfort zone. Uh -huh. And it, it just, it, you know, it, it's fear. And fear guided me for a long time. But I, I totally agree with what you're saying. Unfortunately, a lot of people won't change until something like it. And it has to be pretty bad. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems you went through it. You, you got better. Um, you knew everything about the lifestyle, about the food. But then there was one thing left. And there was a stress, right? I think that's one of the last things that you're uh, uh, learning how to manage. Um, your divorce uh, str stressed you out a lot, mm -hmm. right? It was an absolute shock for you. Mm -hmm. um, and that made you sick too. Uh, but you had all of this knowledge and it was easier for you to kind of heal for the second time. Yes, absolutely. And uh, there is actually one sentence from uh, my previous, previous therapist from many, many years ago that I remember. And he told me because I was really scared as I was pregnant that mm -hmm. I will become depressed again since I've had depression before. And he told me second time is never the same as the first one. Mm -hmm. so the first one, you don't know what you're dealing with. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't really know. Mm -hmm. Second time around, everything is easier. Second, having second child is easier. Having, you know, second, whatever is going to be easier because you know what you're going to be dealing with. Mm -hmm. So um, while my diet at the time was absolutely impeccable, mm -hmm. impeccable. And that's why I always want to emphasize that it's not just about food. food. I would say it's usually 50% food, 50% stress. For some people, if they're dealing with hormonal issues, then all these things that I have mentioned before, like chemicals will play a huge role. Mm -hmm. And that's why individual consultations are the best thing because that's mm -hmm. how I can help you the best. But overall, 50-50 is stress and food. So um, while I was able to manage everything else in my life and change the cosmetics I use and the makeup I use mm -hmm. and you know, uh, sleep as close to 9 p.m. in the evening because between 9 p.m. and 1 a.m. is when the body repairs twice as fast, mm -hmm. which is phenomenal. Again, body really knows what it has to do. Body has innate intelligence to heal you. Mm -hmm. I tell this to my clients. I'm not healing you. Neither are you, to be honest. Your don't body. give that much, uh, you know, uh, uh, props to yourself. Uh -huh. We don't have that power. Your body just knows what to do. Your body's doing it by itself. Mm -hmm. Once you remove stuff, that you're doing it to it. Mm -hmm. So the body knows how to do this. And my body knew how to do that the second time after I, you know, managed my emotions, my feelings, and my anger. Because mm -hmm. anger will kill you. That is also very true. Okay. Um, you spoke a lot about this uh, throughout the, the entire conversation, but I do have a little game over here. Oh. Um, it is, um, I love how for you there is inflammatory ingredients and non-inflammatory ingredients, right? <laughs> so this is a game, okay? Um, I'm going to call this now, this time it's changed name from episode to episode. Um, now this is going to be a healthy jar, okay? okay. So I'm going to read some ingredients for you and it's going to be smash or pass. It's going to be yay or nay. It's going to be kale yeah or kale no, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. So I, you spoke about some of these ingredients okay. already. Uh, is that how so, you got prepared? Mm, so I will pick the first one and I'm going to ask you to tell. Oh, no, <laughs> it's a kale line angels. <laughs> I, I, oh. didn't, I didn't expect that one. It's going to be the first one. That's okay. a total smash. Kale my total smash. Kale, my name has only just has only four ingredients, all organic. And it's a ginger, apple, pineapple and kale. It's, I knew that you should have asked me that. I know. But is any of those uh, in, uh, ingredients inflammatory? God, no, absolutely okay. not. Perfect. Let's go to the next one then. Ginger we'll, is very anti-inflammatory. Really? Yes. Okay. So ginger, I love, I like, I, I you know, love. I have to tell you this really quickly. I mm -hmm. had a person who I put on my ginger turmeric shots uh -huh. and their doctor told them that they should stop doing that because they're on blood pressure medication. So it's going to lower the blood pressure too much. Uh -huh. So they didn't tell them to stop the medication. They told them to stop the, <laughs> the juice. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> you, you see, well, that's all type information we have. I'm going to actually finish um, okay. with, with something like that. But um, 
you already spoke about this one, but I'm so curious about corn. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Corn, it's a pass for you. It's not smash. So uh, I'll say pass with one S. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> occasionally you want to eat um, some organic popcorn that you uh -huh. made yourself in avocado oil. That's fine. You know, just avoid it as much as you possibly can. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Ooh, hoo, hoo. this is a big one. Okay. okay. And there is so much controversy and fights around that. Is it healthy? Or is it Big not? Mac? No, it's coffee. Coffee. Okay. Smash or pass and tell me why, yay or nay. Okay. Coffee is a nay for me. Nay? Okay. Nay. No, mm -hmm. I stopped drinking coffee probably five years ago and I'm very happy I did. Uh -huh. Nothing that makes you feel or, or your body makes it different is good for you. So just like uh -huh. alcohol isn't good for you because your moral values just go down. Uh -huh. Coffee. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> More of, I was thinking some other things uh, that alcohol damages to the body, but also more about it's the truth know? though that your moral values do go down. Uh -huh. um, but also with coffee, so no, coffee is also very moldy. Coffee will make you have um, bowel movements that are not really coming from your body being healthy and getting enough fiber. But it's also coffee, very it's abrasive. Pushing it. Yes, <laughs> it's pushing it. Mm -hmm. um, it's also being very abrasive to your intestines. Um, it's also giving you false energy that's then soon followed by a crash. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to do that. I want you to naturally be high on energy. I want you to naturally go do number twos every day at least once because you're healthy and eating enough fiber. Wonderful. Go ahead, pick next ingredient Alrighty. yourself. Let's see what you're going to choose. I love that information about coffee. You know, I stopped drinking coffee too. Yes, um, I know. So. And I hope I influenced you at least a little oh bit. Oh my God, of course. Of course. Um, Wheat. So are you supposed to answer now? No. Oh, no, still I, me. I, I, yeah, because <laughs> I, I don't know anything about that. So Wheat. Oh. Like, a, like a gluten, technically. Yeah. That's what I'm referring to. So gluten to. is in wheat, uh, barley, and rye. Mm -hmm. I am not a fan of gluten. I think gluten is extremely inflammatory, especially uh -huh. the way it's being uh, produced in the US. It's different than in Europe, uh -huh. absolutely different. Um, I've in, even seen people who have celiac disease going to Europe and going to you know Italy and eating pasta and not even reacting to the gluten there. Mm -hmm. I don't think gluten there is necessarily healthy. I just think it's somewhat better. But the biggest problem with gluten, just like with cheese, just like with dairy, just with, like with anything is a lot of everything is not good. A lot of anything isn't good. Even mm -hmm. a lot of, you can't have five cups of kale every day. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's too much. Then, okay. then you're, you, you know, you're doing too much to your kidneys. So same with wheat. If you're occasionally having, you know, a slice of pizza twice a week, it's not gonna do anything to you. But come on, people are eating wheat three times a day. Mm -hmm. So that's why most of the times when you're doing intolerance tests, you're going to be allergic or sensitive to wheat mm -hmm. and you're going to be sensitive to, uh, to dairy. And people usually think that uh, if they do the lactose free dairy, which is still the same dairy where they add lactate, you know, it's still going to be a problem because usually what's making you be sensitive to it is casein mm -hmm. and you can remove casein from milk. Next ingredient, go Next ahead. Ingredient. <laughs> eggs eggs okay some people will argue they'll I tell mean, they eggs can are argue. healthy they're so good for you tell yeah. us I, it's a no for you i'm gonna assume eggs are honestly going to be a huge no for me uh, uh just realizing that that's a reproductive system of a chicken a, a part of it just like mm -hmm. i'm ovulating every month that's what chicken is doing and that's what eggs are if I like to say if the chicken did the nasty with the rooster, then it's kind of the abortion. Mm -hmm. So I'm not trying to put either of those in my in my body, in my, you know, in my mm -hmm. organism. If someone again wants to eat eggs and they're convinced that they're good, uh, they they think they're gonna miss out on cholesterol from eggs, um, they they can at least do pasture raised eggs and just yep. do like again twice three times max a week. I definitely do not recommend it every day. Even if they're convinced that they're healthy, that's perfectly fine. You know, I, I won't argue with that. Yeah. Everybody has a right to, to choose whatever they think is, you know. Cool, what's our healthy. next ingredient? Next ingredient is dairy products. Dairy products, cool. 
Yeah. You you talked about that a lot. Yeah, this is also definitely a nay. I've talked a lot about dairy. Like I've said, it's just a bunch of hormones, a hormonal cow mm -hmm. uh, that's also being stressed out because they just took away her calf. Mm -hmm. So all of the fear, all of the anxiety she's excreting into that milk. You know, when you're a mom, you're not even allowed to do any detoxification because everything is going to go to the milk. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to detox yourself from heavy metals and from toxins because it's going to excrete to the milk and the milk is going to go to the baby. So that's what cow is doing as well. Mm -hmm. She's suffering and she's not feeling well, she's not feeling happy. So all of the unhappy hormones are going into the milk that we're ingesting again. So mm -hmm. awful. Yeah. Or the fear in an animal's eyes mm -hmm. when they know they're about to be murdered, all that fear gets trapped in their fat tissue. Mm -hmm. And again, that's what we're eating. So we're eating, Mad cows, in a true sense. Sunflower seeds. Yeah. Oh, this is definitely a smash. Smash, okay. Yes, love any, sunflower seeds. Any benefit? So uh, Dr. Joel Furman actually um, talks a lot about G-bombs mm -hmm. being the healthiest foods you can eat. Uh -huh. You maybe haven't heard this uh, from me before. So G-bombs stand for G is for greens, B is for beans, O is for onions, M is for mushrooms, another B is from berries, and uh, the last S is for seeds and nuts. Uh -huh. So all seeds and nuts, highly recommended, amazing for you. You can do some hemp seeds for uh, aloe omega. You can do sunflower seeds. You can do chia seeds, all of them perfect, full with nutrients, great for aloe omega. So definitely a smash. Wonderful. Olive oil. Olive oil is a yay for me. Mm -hmm. I do think um, a problem with olive oil becomes when we heat it up. Okay. Olive oil shouldn't be heated then it starts uh, creating um, certain compounds that really shouldn't be in our food. Mm -hmm. So I love to use olive oil in a Mediterranean style, in a fresh salad, mm -hmm. living, lively, healthy foods, vibrant foods are the healthiest foods we can eat. So adding some healthy fats from olive oil, definitely a smash. Perfect. What else we have there? All right. Am I going to just go through the end? I'm uh, sure. Let's finish. Kale. Kale, yeah. Uh, <laughs> tell me about kale. Oh, kale. Dr. Joel Foreman, again, developed a chart uh, giving IQ mm -hmm. to all of the fruits and vegetables, uh, Coca-Cola, potatoes, nuts, uh -huh. seeds, uh, McBurgers, and whatnot. And kale actually scores the highest. Oh, wow. So kale is the smartest. The smartest of all the plants. Of all the plants. Kale Love is that. phenomenal, full of nutrients, full of iron, the good iron, the iron your body can recognize and absorb, not the ferrous iron that the doctors prescribe because your body cannot really recognize that iron. That's why you're still anemic. No, you're not supposed to be anemic. No, God doesn't want you to be anemic <laughs> <laughs> or have painful periods. Eat kale. Uh, okay. <laughs> so kale, my name. Uh, love it. Soy. Soy is a yay for me. Mm -hmm. very amazing and especially in women who have had breast cancer mm -hmm. research is showing that the phytoestrogens from soy are phenomenal they're full of protein um they're full of other nutrients so definitely great option for me perfect um it just gets so much of controversy yeah. around the soy and people talk about having estrogen right but you already said that's not a same it's phytoestrogen it's completely different it has nothing to do with no. the right? So it cannot uh, make men act like a woman if they eat soy or things like that. Soy, no, but chicken might. Okay. Because <laughs> it's loaded with hormones. Good. Do you know that all the medication that's given to cow, for example, mm -hmm. haven't really been tested to what they do to humans? Yeah. You know? So cows are on antibiotics and medication that we don't know what it does to our system and our body. Well, we see what it does. It causes diseases. Well, yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. Grapes. Yes. This is an interesting ingredient. I know. Well, some people will tell me like, oh, do I eat a lot of grapes. Good. And I would hear like, oh, don't eat so much. It's going to give you diabetes. Grapes are going to give you diabetes. Yes. Yes. That's what I heard before. All right. And fruits in general. So, so. let's talk about that, Yovana. So diabetes is caused by fats. Mm -hmm. Diabetes is not and has never been caused by sugar. What happens is I'm going to try to explain it very simply. There is sugar traveling down your bloodstream when you eat grapes, when you eat watermelon, okay? And sugar is trying to penetrate your cells and create energy because that's where it belongs. 
But you know that bacon you cooked this morning and the, the fat from the bacon, you didn't want to pour down the drain in a sink, not to clog your drain, but you put it down your drain. It clogged your arteries and it clogged that, that same pathway that sugar needs to penetrate into the cell. So it's blockage. It's glue-like substance that sugar just cannot penetrate through to get to the cell. If you remove the blockage and you remove the glue and sugar could go where it belongs, you would not have diabetes. Mm -hmm. And just to make sure that we understand, I'm talking about diabetes type two. Because okay. people sometimes get offended. Diabetes type one is a completely different thing. I just always kind of assume people understand that, but type one is a different thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yes, uh, grapes really, are yay. That's a great information. I love it. I love it. Fruits, to my understanding, is just the healthiest food that a human body can consume. We're fruitarians. Exactly. Thank we were you. born fruitarians. That's right. I love that. All right. Also, I just have to uh, I just have to make make sure that I make this clear. If you have already diabetes, mm -hmm. I don't think while you're healing, you should be eating high doses of high uh -huh. uh, of fruits that are high in sugar because you have all this blockage. Mm -hmm. But in literally three weeks to three months, like you wouldn't believe what plant based whole foods plant based diet could do to you. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I have, I mean, I've had multiple I, people. I have that in family. You know, my father was diabetic yes. for like thirty five years, and now he's vegan, and it's almost like it's that every time he visits doctors, it's a smaller dosage of yep. insulin that he yep. needs to take. Like, and honestly, we think in this point he's gonna go completely off the insulin. Oh, well, he will. Which is literally a miracle for us because after thirty five years being on insulin yep. just insane and the doctor that was against mm -hmm. pl a plant-based diet at first it's now telling him this is unbelievable he cannot believe his tests and everything the same doctor that was like no no you have to eat meat wow um, that makes me really happy actually because usually doctors won't admit um the growth we have done or the healing we have done mm -hmm. so that's really great to hear i'm happy for your dad yeah. I'm I'm very happy about that too. That's awesome. Um, I love that. I wanna we we are we are getting on a, on a time, and I don't want us to finish the episode without mentioning to this. And it's kind of perfect uh, um, a moment for me to mention since we mentioned um, what the doctors sometimes can give us mm -hmm. the wrong advices. Um, I was present when the doctor suggested you a surgery, mm -hmm. a surgery that would leave you handicapped for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm because they thought that that's a solution for you. Mm -hmm. And you fight it immediately. Your entire body wasn't guessing to you. You literally, you didn't say to doctor to, to shut up, but your, your body did. And we're like, I don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. I don't want the universe to hear it. This is not happening and I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. And you refused that. Mm -hmm. And you healed mm -hmm. with the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering what that doctor would say now that, that wanted to, to leave you handicapped for the rest of your life. <laughs> that I will come back for the surgery. She'll say that? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. Um, I'm glad you are proving that wrong and, you know, seeing you happy and healthy um, makes yep. me really happy. Um, it's, a, uh, it's an extraordinary podcast. Have ever people called you extra? <laughs> have people ever called you too much people yes. tell you you're a drama queen yes how you deal with that i don't <laughs> you'll just let them be i just don't deal with that anymore actually that used to hurt me so much uh-huh so that's literally why i have this podcast good i love that okay. I, I love the name um yes it, it used to just hurt me so much because i always knew that I don't know. Maybe it's not good to say that about yourself, but I truly do think that I'm a good person. I know I don't mm -hmm. wish anything bad on anyone. I always mm -hmm. wanted to help people. So it really hurt, you know, mm -hmm. when you were just expressing yourself or showing your emotions or demanding more from life or from people to step up, mm -hmm. you know, and be better versions of themselves, that they would just say that you're too demanding or too much or too extraordinary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Maybe they just needed something more basic, you know? Yeah. Because no, and and I've managed to really fully accept who I am. I am too much and I am a lot and I love it. Mm -hmm. And if you can't deal with it, then, you know, go to someone who is who is less for you. Um. <laughs> I don't want to conform ever again to be less of myself. So I can especially not bruise any man's ego ever again. Good for you. 
I love that. Thank and you. this is the perfect ending. Is there anything else that you would like to say that I didn't ask you? Hmm. I, I cannot even believe that this is over because I, I just feel like we've been talking for 10 minutes. To be It's honest. been almost 90. Yeah. <laughs> Feels like 10 minutes. Um, I honestly do not have anything to add. Uh, thank you for I making me super oh. comfortable in your podcast oh. and oh. you're a phenomenal host and this is this really suits you phenomenally and I'm really, really happy that you're taking this new chapter in your life. Thank you so much um, for coming. It was wonderful. I would just love to say to everyone to please connect with Yovana Way to Health Kitchen um, on Instagram, waytohealthkitchen.com, uh, website, vlog, a lot of wonderful recipes. Yovana, it's about to reach 800,000 followers, getting closer to the million. So go follow now so you can always say I was in your first million of followers <laughs> because I'm sure the more millions are coming her way. Thank you so much, um, Yavana. Thank you, everyone, for watching this episode, for tuning in. Lots to learn from. I'm going to have to rewatch this minimum three times <laughs> to soak the all information that was given to us today. And I cannot wait already to see you the next time. Remember, if anyone tells you that you are too much, you'll tell them to go and find less. I love you all.